Prosecution in the Steinhoff accounting scandal is now expected to start after German authorities finally caught charges against uh, three former executives last week. If tried and found guilty, they face a maximum penalty of about three years behind bars. Although German prosecutors are yet to name the suspects, reports place former CEO Markus Juster and former Europe CFO Dirk uh, Scheinberg on that list. Uh, Germany does not conduct trials in absentia, which means that there's a possibility that a request for the extradition of Juster could be made. Our guest on this matter is Master, Martin Schaefer. He's Germany's ambassador to South Africa. Martin, thanks for your time. Great to have you on the program. So what are you able to tell us about the uh, diplomatic communication or conversations, if you like, taking place between South Africa and Germany around this case? Yeah, no, good morning. Uh, thanks for having me on your, on your show. Well, of course, I am not the spokesperson for the prosecution uh, authorities in Oldenburg. I just represent the, the country as a whole here, but I can confirm indeed that the prosecutor in Oldenburg has uh, issued an indictment on three executives for the falsification of uh, balance sheets of Steinhoff's German companies. We must remember that Steinhoff was a con conglomerate of, of many dozens, maybe hundreds uh, of, of different subsidiaries. And I think the German authorities concentrated themselves you know, on the German part of that. First of all, let me say, I believe this is a, a big step forward because the rule of law must uh, take its course. When we heard in the end of 2017 what happened when Deloitte refused to sign off the, the balance sheets uh, of, of Steinhoff and the whole thing crumbled, there was, of course, the suspicion that some criminal energy must have been at play. And now we see, indeed, that at least the prosecution authority believes that that's the case. We know typically that Germany doesn't conduct uh, trials in absentia, as I mentioned in our introduction, which then opens the door for uh, a process of summons to be issued for people who we suspect are still in South Africa. Um, it's largely a political process, that. Um, do you know if it's begun, and if so, how it's likely to unfold? Yes, Ayanda. Um, maybe let me just very briefly explain how that uh, works in our criminal justice system. Now, we have an indictment by the prosecution authority. Now, the, the, the case lies with the court, and the court will have to decide in due course whether or not to open up the trial. And once the court decides to open up a trial, then uh, it will become public who, is, who are the indicted, who the court wants to, uh, wants to do the trial against and if just supposedly there would be someone amongst those indicted uh, a defendant that uh, resides in south africa be he or she german or south africa then the court can and must issue summonses to those people and if uh, there's a belief uh, that they would refuse to abide by those summonses the court can decide to open up uh, a request for extradition. Now, South Africa and Germany are both part of an extradition treaty of 1957, which is a European extradition treaty of the Council of Europe. South Africa exceeded and ratified uh, its participation in this extradition treaty in 2003, which means there's in principle an obligation by each member state to extradite uh, if another uh, member state asks for that. The operative word there being in principle, do we have any reason to believe, for whatever reason, that that process might not be as smooth as the perception you've just outlined for us? Well, Ayanda, it is still uh, very early, of course. Yeah. Both governments haven't, haven't even started to think about this because we don't know whether there is a South African who resides in South Africa might be indicted. The court in Oldenburg hasn't decided about the further proceedings. Uh, we don't know whether a trial will be open. So this is a very premature discussion. But nevertheless, of course, it's important to start thinking uh, about it. At the end of the day, and you have pointed that out, according to the extradition treaty of 1957, extradition matters are political matters. So the request for extradition comes from a court of justice. In this case, it would be the high court in Oldenburg. But it would be then the, uh, you know, the South African government who would get the request for extradition by the German government 
who would have to decide at the end of the day whether or not to abide by that request uh, of extradition. I guess I can't really uh, blame you for that diplomatic response, can I, given the nature of your work? I mean, it, it's wildly reported who might be indicted here, but fair enough, nothing has been said formally by the German prosecutors themselves. We also know that, you know, this is um, being touted as one of the Steinhoff saga, that is. It's being touted as one of the uh, biggest uh, accounting scandals, even for Germany. And this is after the uh, Wirecard saga, which is a financial uh, service provider that, you know, was also embroiled in a whole lot of fraud. How much attention is this particular case, the Steinhoff one, receiving specifically from the German government? Well, first of all, let me just say one more thing about, uh, because, about this extradition uh, thing. You know, if indeed there would be a South African, maybe Markus Joerste, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not aware of that, but mm -hmm. that could be, of course, and we would ask for his extradition, then, of course, the South African authorities would also have to think about their own criminal proceedings. And if indeed criminal proceedings at the NPA or by the Hawks would be in place, and ready for indictment, I cannot possibly imagine that South Africa would, so to speak, uh, give away its right to prosecute uh, to, to Germany. But that's, uh, th that's a question that we would have to maybe look at in the next couple of months uh, or, or, or so. Now, uh, indeed, Wirecard and Steinhoff were big accounting scandals. I, we have exactly the same debate as in South Africa about the role of accounting firms in this. How is it possible? Now, the indictment is about uh, the falsification of balance sheets between 2011 and 2015. Now, how is it possible that an accounting firm doesn't see this scale of fraud, where the whole balance sheet crumbles, where 95% of the share value is erased in, in a minute when it becomes public? How is that possible? So I think we all have to very, very, very diligently think about new ways and means to make sure that accounting firms do their work. And then we see, of course, that white-color crime is as cruel and as detrimental to all of us than, uh, than you know, state capture crime. Uh, we have to make sure that we get a real fair balance of this, and we have to make sure that all forms of crime that uh, are so detrimental to our societies are being properly investigated and being accounted for. Interesting you say that. There's perceptions in South Africa that the Steinhoff saga isn't necessarily receiving the amount of attention it should be, in part because it's scandal taking place in the private sector. Would you say that's aligned to perceptions in Germany? I don't, uh, I don't think that that's the case in South Africa. I would be surprised if that be true. And I must say I have full confidence in Shamila Batoy, in the National Prosecuting Authority, and its ability together with the other uh, with, uh, with the other structures in the cluster, the Hawks and others, to, to, to bring people uh, to, to book. I don't know whether uh, crimes in South Africa and according to, uh, you know, uh, South African criminal law have been committed, but it looks like it, and I'm, I'm quite confident that in South Africa people will be brought to book for what happened. Really? Even in a context where we know now that Steinhoff is actually um, funding an investigation into itself? Reports emerging, if it wasn't on Friday over the weekend, that 30 million rand is coming apparently from Steinhoff to the NPA and the Hawks to try to assist them in conducting the investigation because the NPA and the Hawks themselves in our country don't have the funds to carry out the probe. Well, you see, even, even in Germany, it took the prosecution authority three years to, to, to get to the bottom of this. I think we have to do with a situation in, bo in which both you know, the crime is quite sophisticated. The uh, defense lawyers and the auditing firms that are on the side of the possibly indicted are very well-paid, well well-educated, you know, refined people. So this is, this is an apple battle. And that's why cooperation between prosecution authorities in Germany and South Africa and elsewhere is so important. And that's why, why it takes time. Now, um, now I think uh, that... Uh, one has to make sure that there's no conflict of interest. And the conflict of interest can be avoided when you have uh, a sort of a contractual relationship which excludes 100% that those who fund can have any say in the outcome of the proceedings. And if that is guaranteed, I'd be happy with uh, what has happened. All right, that's the time we have for this leg of the discussion. Thanks very much for your indulgence. Really appreciate it. Martin Schaefer is uh, Germany's ambassador to South Africa. Appreciate your time indeed.